So this is kind of a tricky part coming up, right? So here we have the derivative, right, d, dx as a derivative of an integral. We have a derivative of an integral here. And it's from a to x. a is a constant, x is not. That one's a variable, okay? So well, essentially what we're doing is we're taking, we're integrating and taking the derivative. And we're evaluating it from a to x. Well, notice if you integrate and then take the derivative, you're going to have the exact same thing you had under the integral. But if you're evaluating it at a variable, notice that the variable has now changed. That's important. Okay. So we have a derivative of an integral. The derivative matches the upper limit of integration. So x, x. So this is the fundamental theorem of calculus here. We've got this matching this, right? Which means, because we're taking the derivative with respect to x, and we're integrating with respect to x, we're, we're integrating with x on our inter, as our upper bound of our interval here, uh, our upper limit of integration, that we're going to be plugging in that. And the t doesn't mean anything. And the t doesn't mean anything anymore. And the lower limit of integration is a constant. Okay? So if we have a lower limit that's a constant, and an upper limit that's an integral. I mean, excuse me, is a variable. Only if it's changing. Though. Right. If it wasn't changing, just plug it in. It's a difference. Okay. And now we have a new variable. So essentially what we're doing is we're evaluating at t equals x. So we're changing the variables. So sometimes these are very easy. But sometimes they could be tricky. Like this one was an easy one. So instead of f of t dt, if we're, if we're taking the derivative, uh, with respect to x from a to x of f t dt, our, our function is now just f of x. All right, suppose so we have here, so this is just sort of what we're, we're doing here, and then it's easier um, when we actually just do it sometimes. Uh, sometimes the explanation is harder than just the doing it. All right, suppose g of x uh, is um, going to be evaluated at a and u of x. And notice now it's just not just an x. We have a function up there, okay? at f t dt, and it's continuous on a, b, and differentiable. Okay? So now, if this is not just an x, not only are we going to have the original, we're going to be able to evaluate. So notice this x here matches this. But since it's not just an x, it's going to be the, the function, f of the function here. And because this is not just an x, we're going to have a chain rule. Okay. So that's the tricky part. So if it's not just a variable, we might have a chain rule here, which means we'll have to take the derivative of our, our inside part. So this says that f is integrated, and then the result is differentiated. We should arrive back at the original function f. Right, so some of these I've left up. Now, the gray steps um, are unnecessary steps. Essentially, we're solving without fundamental theorem of calculus. So we're integrating, we're evaluating, and then taking the derivative again. Um, but we don't have to do all that work if we use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So um, the derivative of an integral, the derivative matches the upper limit of integration, and the lower integration is a constant. It's going to be all of these particular problems here. So here, this is... This matches this, so the uh, um, variable for the uh, differentiation matches our upper limit of integration. Okay? Then we can just, and this is just constant, we can just evaluate. This will be the exact same function if this is just an x, but now it's cosine x instead of cosine t. All right, so this, all these gray steps was unnecessary. Good. So this is us integrating, and then so. But this kind of just shows you that yeah, this is this for a reason. Okay. So and it's the only time I did this is with all the steps is on this first one. Maybe I did it one other time. I, I'm not sure. We'll find out. So this is says take the derivative. The integral of cosine t is going to be sine t, and we're evaluating it from x to negative pi. So now we're taking the derivative of sine x minus sine negative pi, but this is a constant. So this is just the derivative of a constant is 0. 
So when we take the derivative, it's just going to go away anyway. <laughs> That's why the, the, that if the sum of this is a constant, it doesn't matter at all, because when you go to take the derivative, it's going to be gone anyhow. So you just you cross out the d over d of x and the integral sums. They basically cancel each other out. Mm -hmm. And you just change the variable mm -hmm. to x. Mm -hmm. But this is just showing you that, yeah, that's the, that this does work. The thumb up theorem of calculus is, is true. Right? So we take the derivative here, the derivative of sine x is going to be cosine x, which we could have gotten just using the thumb up theorem of calculus and not having gone through all these steps. Okay? So all these grayed out steps here are unnecessary. Um, we can just go from this to this. So long as there's, this is just an x and this is a constant. And so here we have our next one. This one was arctan, which we'll talk more about um, when we look at some of the transcendental functions. Um, so here we're taking the derivative of the integral from 0 to x of 1 over 1 plus t squared. Right? So uh, we know that's arctan. This one does have all the steps so that you can see it. So this one has all the steps. And you don't always <coughs> need to do all the steps. But I wanted you to see that, yeah, this is why it works out, okay? So here, the x matches x. It's just an x. So we can, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, plug the x back in, x in for t, and now we would have 1 over 1 plus x squared. Here's not, the steps below are not using the fundamental theorem of calculus, but we'll get the same answer. Okay? So if you ever got confused, you could integrate and then take the derivative. Right, so the, the integral of 1 over 1 plus t squared is arctan t. And now we're evaluating it from 0 to x. All right, so now we're taking the derivative of uh, arctan x minus arctan 0. Arctan 0 is a constant. It's 0. Um, so that's going to cancel. And now all I have is the take the derivative of arctan, and the derivative of arctan is just 1 over 1 plus x squared. And hey, that's what we had up here, using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now these do get a little bit trickier. Here we go. This one has an x squared, not an x, right? Um, so now they don't match. The upper limit of integration does not match the derivative, but we could use a chain rule, right? Because so now we have an x and an x squared, and they're not the same. So if the upper limit of integration, um, if the upper limit of integration is a variable, and it should say it matches, not if matches, it matches, you just integrate and substitute the new variable. Okay. Um, if the upper limit of integration is an expression and not just a new variable, then we need to use a chain rule. So we have to use a chain rule here. All right. So now we'll have. If we go to plug this in, right, it doesn't match. So we have cosine x squared. But now you have to take the derivative of the x squared part. Okay? And I think somebody got lost all the way, along the way on this one. So, well, here's the right answer over, over here. I think I was trying to rewrite it, but we do have the right answer over here. Oh, I get it. I get yeah. It. All right. So we have to take the derivative of the x squared part, which would be a 2x. Right? So now we have cosine x squared times 2x. So 2 sine cosine x squared is our answer up here. Okay? So we have to, if it's not just an x, you have to use a chain rule. So the variable always becomes the upper limit of integration. Yeah. If there's yep. anything other than an x, you just multiply it by the derivative of the upper limit. Uh, it depends how much off it is from just an x. Oh, really? Wait, what about oh. an x to the fourth? Is there anything different? No, yeah, I'm going to be the same. Right here, we have a problem, first of all. The lower limit's a constant. It's not a constant, but the upper limit is. Here we have to change. Okay? So we're going to change the 5 and the x because the, the variable needs to be up here. Oops, now I'm dropping cereal. That one needs to be the variable. And this one needs to be the constant. Lower has to be the constant, upper has to be the variable. Now all is good because all I have to do is drop cereal on the floor again. <laughs> I had a dog in here following me along. All right, so that would be negative 3x sine x, right? So um, we, all we did here is we switched the sign, we switched the limits of integration, which makes it negative, and now we can just plug the x in. 
Okay, so this is the other part of the FTC which says that the derivative of a function defined by an integral is the integrand evaluated at x. In other words, the integral and the derivative are inverse processes. I'm sorry, I'm chewing the microphone. <laughs> All right, so this one's a nice simple one. All right, so using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we want to evaluate the derivative from a to x of 3t squared plus 2. All right, we have constant on the lower integration, lower limit of integration is a constant, upper limit is a variable. The variable matches, dx matches x. So now I can just, and it's just an x, I can just plug it in 3x squared plus 2. So those are the easy ones. Right? So long way, this is showing why it works, right? Just in case you didn't believe me. Right? So here we have the derivative of the integral from a to x, 3t squared plus 2dt, right? So we would integrate and then evaluate. So, and so you ever get confused, you could integrate and evaluate. So you have two ways to solve this. So the integral of 3t squared would be t cubed, right? The exponent would increase by one, we divide by three. And the integral of two would be 2t, and we're gonna evaluate that from x to a, right? So we have the derivative of x cubed plus 2x, and so we plugged in an x there. So all we did was we plugged in the x for the t, and then we plugged in the a for the t. So then we have minus a cubed plus 2a, right? And now I want to take the derivative of that. But the a's, those are just constants. There's some constant. So the derivative of a constant is going to be a 0. So this whole part here is just going to be a 0. Right? It doesn't even matter. And now all we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of the rest. Right? So that's what this minus c is. That's just this here, right? being a constant. And when we go to take the derivative, okay, it's just going to be 0. So I take the derivative of x cubed, you get 3x squared. Take the derivative of 2x, you get 2. Okay? So this highlights the relationship between the derivative and the integral. And using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can do it a little simpler. However, we could just integrate, evaluate, and then take the derivative. It's just longer, but it's still the same answer. What's the point of it? It's a key part of the inverse relationship. Because sometimes we have variables that change. Isn't it just a proof that it's true? This part is, not the other part. Oh, here's the rest of this problem here. <laughs> okay? So here we're taking the derivative of x cubed plus 2x minus c, we get 3x squared plus 2 using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Part one, part two, whichever part you decide to call it, this is actually the second part two in my notes, um, and it's part two in the book. Sometimes they call it part one. All it matters is there's two parts. Okay. Wouldn't it make sense for this to be part one because the other part is using the fact that... It's kind of a... Well, no. We're, this part was the part one part. The, this part here, the plugging in, that's a part one part, I would say. However, a part two part talks about the relationship between the derivative and the integral. And so this would be the part two part. Wait, go back a slide. I figured out a thing. If, so that's the same thing we use for f of b minus f of a. Yes. This is just using the limits. So that, that's giving, I get it. Yeah. And that's giving you the function. Yes. And that's why it works for the other thing. You yes. Said. This is f of b minus f of a. You are right. And then we're just taking the derivative of f of b minus f of a, which gets us back to the function. Oh, excuse me, back to the derivative. Go team. Okay, so let's use the fundamental theorem of calculus for this one. And I have my crew here to help me out. All right, so we want to evaluate, want to find the function that's the derivative of the integral from a to x, square root of t squared plus 1 dt. That would be? Uh, the square root of x squared plus 1. And you are correct. Mm -hmm. I like this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, like, it's a Russell it's problem, no work. Now, here, our upper limit is not not just an x. So we can't just plug that in. 
we have to plug in an x plus 2 and take the derivative of x plus 2. So notice that we have now we have a chain rule here. Okay? So this here is just our upper limit. And we have to come when it's not just x. We're going to use a chain rule. Of course, the chain on this is pretty simple because the, the derivative of x plus 2 is 1. So it's a pretty easy chain on this one. All right, that's why we only have a little bit left to this one. Um, so we have 4x plus 8 and then plus 1. Right? So the x plus 2 replace the t, so that t here was replaced with an x plus 2, and then we have the plus 1. This one doesn't matter, the derivative doesn't really matter at all because it's just 1, and that gives us our answer of 4x plus 9. So when we evaluated x plus 2, not just x, instead of having, it won't just be a 4x plus 1, and now it's a 4x plus 9. Okay. So you'll, when it's not just an x, you have to use a chain rule too. So you'll take the derivative. Okay. So far so good? I thought this was a harder lesson than the other one. And then here's using the long way. Okay? So this would be the long way. Okay? So here's if we integrate and then um, evaluate and then take the derivative. Okay? Then we would have the if we integrated well I don't know if I want to go over it, but this is the long, just the long way. We won't need to do. But anyway, so we integrate. The, if we take the integral of 4t, it would be 4t squared divided by 2. Actually, I don't even need this page up here. Never mind, people out there. I'm going to just get rid of this page. I don't think it's necessary because we went over on the last page. All right, so let's go over this problem. All right, so here we have an x squared. All right, so we're going to plug in an x squared. But then we have to um, take, multiply by the derivative. And so, and not only that, we do have neither one of those being a constant. We have a 2x, so we have a little bit of a problem here. Okay? So we're going to have to split the integral into two parts, and we'll have a 0 in between. Okay? So you can always use a 0. The 0 is always good. All right, um, so we're going to, we've got a, a, an x squared and a 2x, so we're going to have to split that for the 0 x squared and then a 0 2x. So notice those two match. So we can combine them. All right, so now we'll have to plug in our, the different parts here. Okay? Now, we're okay with the x squared, but we have a problem with this one because the variable's not on top. So the first one we have to do any, the second thing we have to do besides split this is we have to flip this. So now the variable's on top. Okay, so now that part's good. So now we can plug in, and then we multiply by the derivative. All right, so this is what the tricky one I was talking about. Okay, so here, but two variables, you're going to split it. Use a zero. Use an a if you want. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, and then on this one, when they're in the wrong order, you have to flip it. So now we, ha now we can um, evaluate um, and uh, use the fundamental theorem of calculus in our chain rule. All right, so here we have 1 over 2 plus e to the x squared. So we replace the t with an x squared. But then we have to take the derivative of the x squared part. So the derivative of x squared is going to give us 2x. Okay? So now we have 1 over 2 plus e to the x squared times 2x, and then minus 1 over 2 plus e to the 2x, because we plugged in the 2x now. And then the derivative of 2x is going to give us 2. Okay? That's what that says over the side there. It's kind of in the way there. So now it would just be 2x over 2 plus e to the x squared minus 2 times uh, 2 over 2 plus e to the 2x. Right? So you have to remember to multiply um, by your derivative if it's not just an x. Right? Any questions on this one? Yeah. So if it's not just, or if the value of the d of x is not the same as the 
Yep. Yep. And if there if there are two variables, you split it into two parts. Can I take a mental break? Mm-hmm. We're taking a mental break.